The Small Business Show, episode 156 for Wednesday, January 31st, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. People are going to think that we um, went and boosted like the low mids on our audio for this episode because <laughs> we're both sort yeah. of, you know, f- fighting or suffering from or getting over head colds. So there you yeah, go. The rasp, the rasp is ba- is uh, still here. Yeah. The raspy voice. The you know? rasp and the resonance so. of the nasal ca- cavity. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. And here, here we are at January 3rd. First, you know, time time marches on, man. You either uh, marches over you, or you get in step with it and uh, <laughs> keep hustling. And I, I always think it's like, wow, the month of January is already gone. I know uh, it, it's cool. So, it, you know, as as we're kind of wrapping up the month here, we have some notes that we're going through Slack as we use to communicate on the show and keep our thoughts and things. And I thought it would be good to have kind of a grab bag show and uh, discuss a few topics. I like the grab bag episode. It, um, yeah. I'm, I I know what I think we're going to talk about. But I'm well, almost, we'll see where that goes. I'm almost <laughs> hesitant to share that because I don't think we'll we'll get to where we think we're going to go. So yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I always say when I when I describe the show, I went to uh, here we go on the segue. I, I I spoke on a panel last Thursday night at eBay, uh-huh. and uh, I've mentioned here on the show before they have a an event which I think is fantastic. It's called Becoming eBay, and for new employees, and it's a three day event, and it. it the culmination of the event is a dinner where they bring in, I guess there's usually between 10 and 20 of us. And I've been to a few of these uh, yep. sellers, their, their customers. And we get up on stage and they ask questions and we talk and, and then, and then after the, it's about an hour or so we go down and, and we each pick a table and we have dinner with these uh, new eBay employees, huh? And and as and you know, and we get you know have a couple beers and hang out and talk. And uh, I've had different experiences. Sometimes it's pretty quick. Other times, like this last Thursday, I mean, I basically had to be like, guys, I got we got to go home. They're going to shut the building. Wow, because uh, we were talking so much about things, and um, I, I thought it was great that they eBay just bought Terapeak. And if you don't know what Terapeak is, if you're in any kind of product business, you need to go search and learn about Terapeak. Um, they keep all the data for eBay sales for basically forever. So it's a great uh-huh. way to lear- learn about uh, your product that you're interested in and what the market has been and what it's right now, velocity, sale prices and stuff. Oh, so wow. I sat at a table, yeah, with some cool eBay folks and also uh, the controller for Terapeak that's just coming over to uh, to eBay and some other Terapeak thing so man it was just fantastic um had, had a great time up there and those i don't know where things, i started this like thing, no th- like taking those opportunities to do one thing I mean, it's you know it's sort of the meta yeah. theme of this episode right you do yeah. you, you head there to do one thing and then like you said you're sitting there with the controller of this company i, I mean not only are there great things to learn from that person and and hopefully to share of your own so that it's a you know participatory thing in that yeah. moment but now you have this contact that down the road oh, huge. might be huge. Yeah. For yeah, them absolutely. or for you or for both. Yeah. Yeah. One guy, there was a guy who was there, super nice guy. And he was kind of a, a he was a purchasing procurement guy for eBay and had some really fascinating stuff to talk about. And, you know, he's like, oh, now I'm, I'm trying to buy buses, you know, because in the Bay Area, uh, it, it's crowded. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, there, all these tech companies bus people around from the suburbs or from San Francisco to try to, you know, get them there so they can work on the way because it could take, you know, two or some, you know, two hours, two and a half hours to get to work. Uh, So, uh, you know, it was great. And I was listening. I was like, I'm not sure how applicable this is to me, but this is a super nice guy. And uh, he handed me his card and goes, hey, you know, I know a lot of people here. If you ever need help with any problems, just let me know. And I, right. and I told him, I said, I said, Hey man, that's exactly why I come here. Not only do I love eBay and it's impacted my life in a super positive ma- uh, way, um, uh, meeting, you know, folks like you that can help, you know, solve problems down the road, uh, as they inevitably, inevitably come up. Yeah. Is, yeah right. I mean, it, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, oh, uh, it, it, that was our segue, you know, my, my initial segue to start, but uh, it comes back, you know, we, we did a show not too long ago about why you need to go to events like this. Yeah. Uh, they're really easy to ignore because you get busy and you know, it takes me, it took me an hour to drive down there and yep. do all this stuff. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's priceless, uh, to, to make these connections in within your industry or without, uh, and, and, you know, they come in handy. For totally. Sure. Oh yeah. 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 No. And plus yeah, yeah. I, you know, I had somebody a, a long time ago, this guy named Tim street who I, his first claim to fame that I knew of was sort of at the beginning of podcasting. He started French made TV, um, which was oh. this ridiculous thing. He, he's a, you know, an LA guy. And so he right. was like, great. I understand tech. I'm going to have these women dress up in French made costumes and uh, they're going to explain like how to configure your router or nice. right, right. I mean, it's just <laughs> target it, marketing, totally yeah, yeah. pandering. Right. That's cool. But, right, right. but it was a very successful thing for him. And, um, and, and then he went on to do a bunch of other things that I, I actually honestly forget where he is now. I think he's, uh, he's, he's with, I think he competes with, with us at Backbeat Media actually now. I think he's, he's oh, with somebody yeah. that, that sells podcast sponsorships and that sort of thing. At least that's the last place I saw him. But you know, that's sure. how this industry goes. That's like, that's good. Like, it's good to have people you like in, in positions of, of competition. Cause you can yeah. call them and talk to them. But, um, I, he said to me once, you know, cause I, we ran into each other at like three conferences in a row and I was like, do we got to stop meeting like this? And he's like, yeah. I said, do you like, what other shows do you go to? And he started listing I'm like, man, that's crazy. Said, well, you know, this is a full contact sport, man. And yeah. I, you know, I firmly believe that just getting out and doing this. And like you said, having dinner or even having a drink or coffee or whatever, like running into people. Yeah. There's the people that you're supposed to meet with that you schedule time with. And that's like super sure. valuable. But, you know, any of these conferences is gravity, right? It brings some segment of people together. And if yep. you if you're intelligent about picking the right ones uh, and, and you'll you'll get it wrong. Sometimes you'll find yourself at a conference or a dinner or whatever. And be like, OK, well, yeah, it's not I'm that not gonna, useful. I'm right. not going to do this one again. This isn't good for yeah. me. But way better than sitting home and missing the one that was going to change your life. So, right. um, so yeah, that was his thing. And he's like, you know, and I, cool. and I know, like I watched him and he moved around from, you know, from uh, opportunity to opportunity. And it was all just because he was Tim Street. That was it. He was oh, just yeah. that guy that yeah. everybody knew. And so you learn to trust him. And there's sure. no reason not to, but there's no reason not to trust most people. But the the trust isn't implicit right it's, it's yeah you, you know you have to like th there's things that help you build trust that's right. and that's you know yeah so, and yeah like you know i think you mentioned or actually we had um uh you know ladan uh, davia on the show yeah. a few weeks back from from bia.com and yep. she was talking about uh this concept of referred trust and you know i i, I we, we should chat about that a little bit yeah. and it's actually on uh, our agenda i didn't even yeah, can you when believe i brought it? up tim i didn't even it's a good segue. <laughs> to segue but i caught it happening so it's good <laughs> yeah that was pretty powerful yeah um you, you know and and it's th there's a there's kind of this obligation, right? When you refer someone uh, to that, if people ask you a lot, especially if you become a resource, like you're talking about, yeah, um, you know, or you become quote an expert, or your your brand, if you will, is oh, I've got knowledge in this field. Hey, who do I call to get you know X done, yep. uh, or to help me with you know with this? And and that referred trust, it's a it's powerful, but it's also a, a big obligation that you can yeah can go south. Uh, that can sour uh, pretty quick. It can. And, you know, in, in yep. Ladan's case, it went really sideways. And and obviously the person, it, it was like the president of some university or something that that referred yeah. these programmers to her that then screwed her out of 50 grand. Um, yep. It, it, you know, obviously that person isn't financially or legally liable for what happened there. Right. You know, everybody's an yeah. adult. Ladan took that. She took it on faith. She did some level of due diligence, which clearly in retrospect, not enough. Um, yeah, that's right. You know, and, but, and, and, and she totally grocks that that's on her, right? As, as we all should. Like, that's the adult way to handle it. But. Yeah, yeah. But will she yeah. trust a recommendation from that person the next time? And no. will And will that person <laughs> be willing to make a recommendation 
the next time, right? I mean, not about these guys, obviously, no, but but about anyone. Like, oh, you know, I hate to, you know, I and I've certainly found myself in that position. Oh, me too. Yeah, me too. It's it's, very cautious uh, about when I lend my social capital to something. It is. And, uh, you know, I love to be a resource for people. Yep. Um, but you do have to really be careful. Uh, and I, I've just recently had it where I was trying to help someone get a product that, you know, I'm, I've have some experience with, but on a, on just a strictly like wholesale level. And, you know, they asked me for some help and I, and I, you know, I really like this guy. I was like, ah, you know, I want to help you out. And, and, uh, you know, get you this product that's kind of hard to get, maybe save you some money. And and the whole thing just went sideways because uh, the source I was trying was just not that reliable and it just kind of fell apart and made me just realize this is why I don't normally do this, yep. you know, because it's so easy for it when it's out of your control uh, for things to go sideways. And, and I think your, uh, like you said, it's... Um, your brand or whatever takes a little hit. It takes yeah. a little shine off your superpowers, if you will. It totally does. Uh, yeah. 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 It yeah. makes people realize you don't actually have superpowers is what it is. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> and, I, and I hate that, you know, because yeah. I love to, to be able to go, oh yeah, here, call yeah. this guy or do this and this will help you and all that yeah. stuff. It's, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy doing it, but uh you, and you some people are really good at it. I mean, I, you know, I, yep. the, this guy, uh, Mike Dunn, who used to work at Hearst and now he moved across the country and uh, is doing something, something else over there. But he was like Mr. Introductions. Like it, mm. he, he was the, the, the king of the network and really, really good at it. Um, but I, you know, in retrospect, kind of looking back at how he did things, he never, recommended anyone to anyone. It was always, I should introduce you to, you might oh. have something to do together. I should introduce you to, you know, and it's, it, he was like very effective at it. And uh, there's some business relationships that I have to this day that, that I can trace right, like almost directly. Some of them, in fact, directly back to him, but it, it's always like, it, I, I don't, but I don't immediately think, oh, yeah, thank goodness, you know, for Mike. It's like, oh, that's wait a minute. Mike was at the core of that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't I, I give him credit for it, but but it not so much that he's responsible. Yeah. And, and, and I think that brings up a good point about the nuance. Oh, it's in, all about the nuance. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because in, in like in my example here that I was kind of outlining, you know, uh, I, I probably should have phrased it a little bit better in the sense of, oh, let me see if I can connect you with someone that can help you yeah. versus, hell, let me help you out with this. And uh, it got too complicated. And here I was trying to help somebody and it, you know, uh, well, went sideways. So yeah, I think that's a great, uh, you know, the nuance thing. that you that the, the sort of the nugget of that nuance is in one scenario, you're just introducing two people that. Uh, that you think could help each other, you know, in some fashion. Right. And the other, you're putting yourself in as the role of middleman. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem. Right. But that the problem with uh, those of us that are entrepreneurs is, you know, our initial gut reaction often is I see an opportunity where two people are going to make money. I can, be the, <laughs> I can be the third one to make money. Right? <laughs> well, yeah, even in this case, I, and I get that. I, I totally understand that. But like in, in my example, there, there was, I was just trying to help out a friend. Sure. And be like, well, this, the, the, the resource I'm trying to introduce them is not the most, uh, I don't want to use a reliable, but it's not the most, um, polished. Uh, it, yeah. Polished. So I'm, I'm going to help in this situation, yeah. kind of ease things over. And it was, it was a disaster. And at the end I, I, you know, wound up not looking that great because I couldn't help the guy. And yep. and it took a little while to get to that point where I finally said, say, you know what? I'm sorry. I can't help you. Um, instead of like, Hey, here's a phone number. Call this guy. I'm not sure he can help you, but here's a, here's a resource for you. Right. I have to, I have to remember that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough because you know, if you, I, I cause I've, I'm guilty of this too. If you go back and look like, was that, was it really worth the headache for me to yeah. get involved in that? Should I have just like, was there any benefit to me in protecting and isolating this relate, these two separate relationships? And oftentimes the answer is no, there was That's correct. You, you and, and what I ask, yeah. And I ask myself that often where I say, 
what value can I add to yes. this? Right. Are you adding it, value for anyone it, it, other than you? Yes. And if I can't add any value, then I typically don't want to be involved because there is no reason to do it. I mean, and, and it, uh, I think that's an, an important yardstick for me uh, yeah, is to try to test. stay yeah. out of things. Yeah. If, if I can really bring something to the table, if the deal won't happen unless I'm involved, you know, am I bringing the capital? Am I bringing sure. the, the buyer? Am I bringing the seller? Whatever it is. Um, but uh, uh, I think I think you have to ask yourself that because mm-hmm. if you're just in it to, to if it's just like well I can get in the middle of this and make a few bucks, yeah. those I don't think are are that great. Yeah, when you're you know, when your only benefit ha- is related to margin yeah. and specifically no. yours, uh, oftentimes yeah. that's like the the other parties are going to figure that out eventually anyway. Yes. And it uh, and it can go bad for you, really bad. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we could do a whole show about. Uh, being in the middle, I have a lot of experience with that and, and how to Same. make sure your value is really there yeah, and how to explain to, you that. You bring value, right? You bring it. And also you may need to uh, occasionally or more than occasionally point out what that value is right. to your, to the other participants uh, in there. And, and it helps keep things uh, transparent and reminds them of uh, why you're involved in the first place. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, hey, good. Uh, go I ahead. had a I had an interesting thing happen this week, and this will actually be at the very least the second podcast this week that I've talked about this on. I, I don't think I talked about it on Mac Geek Gab, but I definitely talked about it on Gig Gab, the one we do for musicians. Um, I played a theater gig, and it, but it has okay. th- this is all in relation to pricing, and and mm. there's a very relevant uh, lesson here. So I played this theater gig last week. And it was a one weekend run Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That was it. It's a show that I had never heard of before. Not that popular of a show called a new brain. Um, very difficult show to, to put on um, the people that, that saw it really liked it. Uh, but it didn't, didn't come with name recognition. Right. And so on Tuesday, the theater looked and realized yeah, this is a theater that holds uh, north of 250 people. And I think they had, you know, 25 pre-sales or something for Thursday night. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Now, now there's always walk-ups too. Right. But still right. that number of pre-sales was, was remarkably low. Okay. And, and so they posted on Facebook and said, Hey, look, you know, we've got a lot of people working really hard. We're paying them. Don't worry about that. But we'd like them to have, people in the audience and we also think that you'd like to see this show but we know that for some of you you know you can't afford to uh to to you know spend your your discretionary income like this on something that you don't know about so here's the deal if you want to come see the show come to the theater on thursday night once the doors open you know well anybody that that bought tickets ahead of time or whatever you get the receipts you reserved and that's cool but uh, once the doors open, come on in and pay what you can. And and if that means you can't pay anything, that's OK. Like we okay. just we just want, you know, butts and seats. I mean, they were sure. they were a little more. <laughs> they were very transparent about it. They were nicer about okay. it than that. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they said, and you know, if you can, if the ticket, I think the tickets there range from 15 to 25 bucks or something, depending on, you know, where you are in the in the room. And they're like, you know, if, if the ticket should have been 20 and you can only pay 10, t- totally fine. Like, just contribute what you can. And then they said, of course, you know, if, if you're uh, feeling generous and you want to contribute more, obviously we'll take that too. Like, no problem. Okay, sure. And so the show went on, on on Thursday night and there were, I think, just shy of 150 people there, oh. which was great. Right. Yeah. It felt like it felt like, oh, we're not just doing this. Like, we don't outnumber the audience. That's awesome. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And. Then the most interesting thing happened because they looked at the numbers and the average price for the tickets that that for the seats that people actually sat in. So the tickets that were distributed, the average price would have been twenty one dollars. OK. Oh, sorry. OK. Would have been twenty dollars. The average price that we got through the door that night was twenty one. Oh, that's cool. We got more money than we would have if we had just sold those tickets to everyone uh, for the for the for the prices that they had they had stuck on. And I say we again, you know, I was paid a flat rate to do the show that, sure. that just didn't affect me. But 
but still, you know, I like pay attention to this stuff because yeah, it's fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah. It and it, you know, it, it's really interesting because when you set a price, that's it. People are either going to agree with it or not agree with it, but, and you may lose business because of it, right? If, if your price is too high or even if your price is too low, like that can, that's right. Right. That can change people's opinion about the value of your service. But everybody has an intrinsic sense of what the value of that service that you're providing should be. Now, I'm not going to sit here and advocate to do that. Every single business in the world should do this, but like that it's not going to work, but there are certain businesses that I think could thrive from doing this across the board. And I also think that in any business, there might be one or two aspects of it where you may be able to do a little bit better, not only financially, but certainly in terms of goodwill by essentially letting people, you know, choose your own price. Um, and it's very That's interesting, it, you know, and I, I posted about this on our, actually, I just posted about it because I shared the thing and I said, this is great what they're doing. And then they continued that throughout the weekend. And we, we sold out Friday and Saturday night uh, for the show and again, made more per ticket than we would have if we had just sold the tickets. Um, yeah. yeah. And I had one guy write to me, this, this, this guy, Billy Eli from uh, Texas, he's a, a guitar player, he tours all around the country. And he said, Oh yeah. He said, I started doing that with my merchandise years ago. And it's amazing how much money I make compared to what I would have made if I just sold everything for whatever I was charging previously, you know, 10 bucks a piece for whatever's in the you know sure. in the merch box, whatever that is. He's like, yeah, I make way more because people think a t-shirt maybe should be 20 bucks. He's like, my t-shirts aren't worth 20 bucks to me, but if they are to you, no problem. That's right. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think it's all the, you know, comparison. Well, compared to the concert I just went to where they were 35 bucks, yes. you know, 20 bucks is a good deal. That's and, the uh, thing. Yep. So if you're, if you're only charging that $10 or whatever it is, 15 bucks, you, in some ways you're leaving money on the table from that customer. Uh, and, and I, I like that idea. I mean, it, it makes me nervous to say, you know, to, it would make me nervous to jump in uh, wholeheartedly, but certainly experimenting with uh, pricing with particular aspects of your business or particular products uh, yep. that you're selling, that that's really an interesting, uh, interesting idea. I think you'd really have to think about... Um, cause like art, you know, which is your the show and everything, yeah. it's very subjective. And most people, uh, that are going to go to a show like that, I would argue, you know, feel some sense of, Oh, you know, art is valuable. Right. Yep, and these right. people need to make, be paid and I want to come here and be entertained. So they would possibly pay a little bit more and certain other, mm. Uh, venues, yeah, fixing your like, iPhone screen, uh, maybe no not way. so much. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or consulting and fixing your computer, coming to your house and doing this kind of thing. All depends on who it is. It, it depends you know, on, if, yeah, it, like I thought about that for, you know, for the consultants out there. Like, would this be a better way? I, and like, I'm not sure that people, I, I, again, it depends on who so. the customer is. But yeah, I, like yeah. that one. In I, the industry, because it's a perceived yeah. value. And, and, uh, I, again, I love the concept and I think you could tweak it for certain parts of your business. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, and, and possibly make more money like the merchandise thing and the music and all that kind of stuff. Cause those, and also the theater, uh, you know, those are emotional connections, right? Definitely. If you're buying merch from this artist, you want to be associated with them or represent that, hey, I was there. I saw this band or this and this yeah. event. And and so you're emotionally connected. So maybe maybe it's more valuable to you, right? You're but, buying right? a concert shirt. Totally. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, it, it, right. That kind thing. of emotions, if I can quantify it, I yeah. would say something with emo translating emotional value to financial value almost becomes a, a, a calculation based on your like a percentage of your total like net worth or income or something yeah. like that. Right. Because if, sure. it, you know, if someone's making twenty five thousand dollars a year. Right? right. And and there's another person that's making one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year and they both experience the same concert you know, play, whatever it is, it, you know, they're both going to have, a, hopefully, and let's say they both have the same emotional reaction. Well, you know, to the person making 25 grand a year, 
like 10 bucks could be considered a lot. Like, whoa, I got to right. be careful. Like that's, you know, maybe more sure. than I make an hour. Big part of their budget. Right. Yeah, big yeah. part of their budget. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Whereas the, the person making 125 might say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll kick it a hundred bucks. Like that was great. Right. Like it, I want it to mean something to me. And so yeah. that's maybe that's where it is. Like, what does it mean to you? Um, and I, you know, yeah, in my consulting I business, it's, it's, I had clients who always insisted on overpaying me like more than my oh, rate. I knew that sure. I couldn't raise my rate in general because of, you, you know, all the other clients I had. But these people, I would give them a, a bill and they'd be like, yep, OK, well, as usual, I'm going to write it for double what you just gave me. Like, oh, that's, that's cool. That's on you. Well, and I think Thanks. it's it's yeah. kind of. Yeah. And it's kind of localized, you know, especially or uh uh, situational is mm-hmm. what it is too. Cause if you're like totally. young, if somebody, you know, older person and you're helping them out and you're like, Oh, I'm gonna charge you whatever it, it's, uh, I mean, I've been in that position before when I was younger and they were like, Oh, come on, you know, you're not charging enough. And yeah. you know, let me, let me help you out here. You did such a great job. You're uh, up and coming, whatever, <laughs> you know, yep, it's and, true. And you, you, yeah. you kind of get that, that pat on the back type thing. Yeah. Uh, the pat on the back with a hundred dollar bill with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but you can't do that when you get to be like in, well, maybe you can. It depends on how old your your customer base is. If they and it depends on how much a, how much charisma you got in you, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but in the, I, like I think on the flip side, one of the constant battles we faced uh, at Tech Restore was was shipping. And you know, over the last decade, the value of uh, shipping uh, items has dropped to virtually nothing because the perceived value is, Oh, I get it shipped for free. But in reality, someone is paying for that shipping, you know, and, and I think Amazon has probably done more to, uh, and I'm using the quote sign here, uh, you know, hurt the, that perceived value. They've they've diluted it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And people forget constantly that they're paying either a hundred bucks a year or 12 bucks a month for that free Shipping, yeah. you know, it, and, and it sure it comes along with Prime and video and other stuff, which is awesome. Uh-huh. And, it's, and I think it's a great value. But uh, if I let customers pick what they wanted to pay for overnight shipping, It'd be I don't believe they would ever pick. Actually, even if they wanted to pay, they wouldn't be able to pick what it actually cost. But, uh, but how and, about you know, this? Like, is there and I mean, this is just a crazy idea. I'm not, I'm, I, I don't know. I remember I've got a head cold, folks. So I got you. Yes, nothing yes. that I say is uh, I'm not responsible <laughs> for anything. It's not my fault. Um, but what if you had like uh, ground shipping is free, right? Yes. Or or ground shipping is five dollars. Choose your own price for overnight shipping. Like setting a relative value and then letting people say, hey, if you want this overnight and that's important to you, we don't want to stand in your way. So you tell us what that's worth. We'll just get it to you. Like, I mean, I wonder if there's something there. Because a lot lot of people will say, "Uh, you know what? I don't need it overnight. Like uh, the ground is fine. But but for the person that's really in a jam, they're going to love the fact that you offer overnight shipping. Oh, sure. Uh, but I would say like we typically, you know, do it in the opposite manner. We say, OK, ground is free. Yep. And then we or or the slowest possible. OK, it's going to be two to nine days or whatever it is, uh, mm-hmm. is free economy shipping. Yep. And let, let me talk about, you know, selling in marketplaces. Uh, economy shipping is always going to be free because if you don't offer free shipping in marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, oh, you're doing you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you, you will not come up in the search results, so you, you just you have to do it. Right. So, uh, but then what you do is go, okay, if you want priority shipping, let's say it's two to three days, most people, st- in my experience, still don't want to pay exactly what it costs because they don't know what it costs. Right. They don't know that if they take it to the post office and it's a two pound item, yeah. uh, it's going to cost them 10 bucks or 12 bucks to ship it two to three days, which is still a pretty good value. Um, and so, well, it's a good value even- if you know what it's supposed to cost. That's correct. Yeah. But an overnight, like if you want to overnight a laptop and you or, or somebody walks into FedEx or UPS and hands it to the guy and says, hey, uh, I want to ship this overnight. It's going to cost them about 80 bucks. Yeah. And no one and knows most people, that. 
That's that's right. That's the problem, Nobody knows right? That. So you maybe yeah. So that's my right. example here doesn't work because people <laughs> yeah, don't, so what, people don't know what it actually. They costs don't know to it. Ship right. They don't have enough knowledge to know that's a good deal. Yeah. And so what we do is we say, hey, economy is free. It may take up to nine days to get to you, but then we show such a great value for priority. Yeah. Two to three day, let's say, and we only charge them like nine bucks. And in reality, we ship everything priority. Because it's better. <laughs> it's just a better service for us. It's, I was just going to say, it's way more predictable. Yeah, it's, <sighs> it's way more predictable. If you ship economy and it floats out there for a week or so, I guarantee you're going to eat up your costs in customer service yep. inquiries versus buying the service. And what, what we've found is that more than 50% of the people will upgrade when you show them for nine days is free, but for only, and, and it depends on the weight, but you know, yeah, $5 or, or seven or eight bucks more, I'll have it to you in two to three days. That's how uh, you're showing this big discrepancy in value and price and they, they jump right on it. Yeah. So, so there's a lesson in here for, for the, uh, for those who are observant, uh, always choose the free shipping uh, uh, from <laughs> Amazon vendors. It depends I know. On the vendor. <laughs> That's the thing, right? But if a vendor's got good star ratings, oh, yeah, I bet yeah, yeah, yeah. they're exact. They're doing exactly what you just described. And yeah. And because I've experienced that where it's like, Oh, I don't care. I don't need it. You know, especially like buying Christmas gifts or whatever. If you, if you're ahead of the curve, you can be like, Oh yeah, it take two weeks. I don't care. Whatever. And yeah. it shows up. Yeah. In three that's days. exactly right. Yeah. 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 And, and, but you know, you're, what you're trying to, as a, as a, you know, what you're trying to do is like, okay, we're going to eat this shipping cost anyway. How do we show the value proposition between just getting a few more bucks out of them? Even if yeah. you only charge five bucks right. and that it's only the covered same half thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's you're going to, you're going to go, okay, uh, I'm going to pay the nine or 10 bucks. So if I could get half of that from the customer, I'm ahead of the game versus every customer that wants free shipping. Plus you're going to come up in the search ranking higher. Right. Uh, your, your, right. your deals are going to be surfaced more by the market. If you're, especially if you're in a marketplace, but I would argue even on your even on your website, you capture their eye, free shipping, and I hate to say it, free returns, which everybody hates from a business perspective, but uh, that's the other hook that grabs people now is if they don't like it, you want to send them a label and have it, yep. excuse me, have it come back. It's just the way, that's how you get customers because they know, oh, there's no risk. And I would argue, and in my experience, it does not increase your return rate to offer free return shipping. Oh, my guess is it increases no, it your, your bottom line to offer that. Yeah, it, it helps out. And and it was one of the things we talked about at this this uh, you know eBay event last week is that everybody gets mad. Oh, you know, eBay's making me do this. And, and it's like, no, no, this is just the market. The This is the, the market that we operate in. And all your competitors are offering this. If you go to any major, you know, uh, retailer or whatever it is, free shipping, free returns, because you want to eliminate any argument to buy that product. Well, that's and, it. Uh, yeah. There's you know. a classic thing in, in sales it, where the, the concept is find out what the objection is, quantify the objection and then take yeah. it away. Yeah. Right. I like, mean, you, you know, if you're sitting right. there with somebody and, and trying to sell them something and they say, well, you know, I just, I don't know. Uh, if, if I'm, if I'm, you know, if I can do this now or if it's going to be two weeks, it's okay. You know what, yeah. then is, is that really the problem? Like make the, and, and, yeah, and this yeah. like is the classic sales thing. You make them say it back to you, right? Because now they are psychologically committed yeah. to that. If I can eliminate that problem. Would yep. you buy it? Would you buy <laughs> right, it? Right. Like, is that the yeah. really the problem? Yeah, that's the problem. I just don't know. Okay, okay. great. Then here's the thing. I'm going to write the order. I've, I've written the order. Here's the order. Uh, I, and and you pay me in two weeks and we're That's good to it. go. And now it, like they can still say no, but now they feel bad yeah. <laughs> because they've already and committed. Yeah, that's right. And the, the richest guy in not just the richest guy in the world, the richest guy in the history of the world eliminated all those things to shopping. And it's Jeff Bezos, yeah. right? He figured it out. He created this, you can call it a virtuous cycle or a, you know, a cycle of hell if you're a, in the business. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, and his comment is, you know, your margin, your profit margin is my opportunity. That's right. And, and the free shipping and the prime and all that kind of stuff. He eliminated everybody. Just, it's so easy. I'm just going to shop. And to many, many people, shopping is just pulling up the Amazon app and, and ordering it there. Because, you know, if I don't like it, they're going to take it back. Yeah. And they're going to force, even if it's a small 
seller in the marketplace, you have to, uh, you know, abide by these rules and you're not going to get, uh, get burned from as a, as a customer. Can so. I take us in a different direction with that for a second? Because absolutely, I, you know, Apple used to be the company that I always said, look, it, they will take care of you as a customer. Don't worry about it. And in recent years, that has my, my perception of that. And, and this comes from not only my own experience, but certainly the people that I hear from is that Apple has gotten a lot worse at that. Are you hearing about that too? And I ask this because Shannon and I both come from the, you know, the long time Apple fans, users and business, you know, that we've had businesses in this market. Some of yeah. us still do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would uh, argue that never has there been a better time to take advantage of uh, the, the uh, what must be an, a massively overwhelming customer service, uh, you know, nightmare that they face on a daily basis. Yeah. And, and, you know, my, I, right. I just That's the got, thing is they've got so many customers. They can't that, handle it. That they, they, they can't handle it the way that they used to. Yes, correct. And I mean, I, you know, I bought my son a new iPhone for Christmas and, yeah. you know, it, it, we're here we are 30 days out after and part of the screen intermittently keeps, you know, failing and, you know, darn it. I don't own a company anymore that, that could fix that. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and I would just fix it. I'd be like, oh, we're not sending it in. It's a nightmare. Just put a new screen on there. Sure. Um, but so, you know, I jump online and say, great. Now I have to go make uh, an appointment at the Genius Bar or whatever. And literally at our local Apple store, there's no appointments. Well, that's the, the battery thing, right? I mean, that's, I think that's a short, yeah, that's thing the battery the thing. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, the battery right. thing. Yeah, you but, know more about it than I do. But yeah. yeah. But what I've, what I've heard from a lot of people, it used to be like, and, and not that long ago, even five years ago, you'd go in with a problem and it, you know, you, you go in with something that might have been covered under warranty. And then you realize they realize during the process. Well, actually, no. You know, oh, this is bigger than yeah. you think, or bigger than we thought. And so, you know, and, and, and they're not there to screw you or anything, but it's like, no, no, this is, yeah. this is not a warranty thing. I would say m certainly more than 50% of the time it was, but we'll take care of you anyway. Yeah. And now, like in the last couple of years, that has gone away. There's no more, but we'll take care of you anyway. There's no more. It used to be that, you know, that, that Max, you couldn't officially, you couldn't take them apart without voiding the warranty. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. it, but if you yeah. took it apart and put a hard drive in and there was a problem with the motherboard that was truly unrelated, you didn't like, you know, leave a screwdriver in there and, and short out the motherboard or whatever, like they would cover it. And I'm hearing now that they, they don't cover that kind of stuff anymore. It's like, oh, nope, we have not any excuse they can I, find. I would say, yeah, the, the key word in my experience is hubris. Yeah. And I hate to use that, but, you know, I love the Mac. It changed my life dramatically. And, Same. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. But I've always battled with the company uh, in the sense. And, and probably if I was involved with General Electric or some other huge, giant corporation, it would be similar. So it not be, to single yeah. Apple out. Well, right? that's what it is, uh, though. It, it, is, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's now just like everything else. It's like everything else. So I, I I think that on the ground they're good people that really do want to help you. But the further you go up and things are run by committee and yep. and uh, procedures are put into place, uh, that's where you run into poor. Uh, performance because the people on the ground don't have the authority like they used to. Maybe I guess that's uh, true. Yeah, and everything is data driven, right? So right. they're going to be how many right. of these did you, you know, when the Apple away, stores, when the retail stores first opened, their only history was that of uh, the, the you know phone support and and depot yeah. depot support. And, and they had so much flexibility and freedom with that, that they just took care of everything. It was like, great. If it's yeah. here, fix it. And I remembered, you know, I would send my computer in for like a new keyboard or something and I'd get yeah. it back. And it was like, well, we replaced the screen and the motherboard and the, this and the, that, cause we saw that those things might be kind of getting flaky. Yeah. So here you go. You're good to go. Um, but as, as the, so when they first launched the stores, that's, that's how they operated yeah. because that was their culture. And you're right. They've, they've now, 
like the stores are driving. It's the the tail wagging the dog in that sense. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that you makes know, sense. Like I said, it, it makes it's, sense. It's, it's got to be incredibly difficult to manage on a day to day basis. And 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 like you said, the, this battery issue thing, and yep. which I think they handled terribly. But anyway, it's another show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's crazy. But I think the you know customer service. Like you always say, Dave, we're all in the customer service business, and it's such an opportunity. You know, when you have a problem, if you solve it correctly and and with a smile on your face and you pick the right token and if you don't know what that means go back and and, find, and, and, and I'll link the episode in the uh, the show notes if you pick the right customer service token like our friend Jean-Louis Gasset uh, explains you can have a customer for life yeah but if you pick the wrong token and plant your you know your draw line in the sand so to speak then you, you can lose a customer for life so yeah and a lot of time in the process yep yeah you got it good stuff man i enjoy talking about this stuff we almost uh, hit things on our agenda even this is good yeah we got a couple more things but we'll save those down the road and uh we'll move on we have a a great interview next week and another one on the week after so we have some some excellent folks coming on the show and uh we encourage you to uh stop back by next week and hear what they have to say yeah should be fun it's cool thanks for listening everybody it's always a good time make sure you visit us uh, businessshow.co or our small business support group on facebook at uh, businessshow.co slash facebook is where we do all of that so that's all I got really? man you got anything else that's it for me too um, right. we'll get our uh, th- our uh, coughs under control for next week we'll sound a little more high pitched keep living <laughs> the charm life see you next week